Today we will be starting with a healthy dose of seed duplication, so that we can build setups like this. Think of all the shenanigans we can do now. But technically the main focus of today's episode is the preparation for this monstrosity here. Getting the base to that point took around 8 days. I am sure you can get there faster, but enjoy this let's play, this episode with the seed and nuclear waste duplication, as well as a lot of preparation. And next episode with a Red Bull thingy. So we will be starting with the seed cloning exploit today. The industrial seed cloner has been developed by Nolz with a few alterations by me. After that we can slowly work our way to the reagent using Red Bull thingy. Designed and developed by Kutai, with the help of Uilson and myself. As for this setup here, you need 3 auto sweepers, 1 dispenser, a conveyor chute and a conveyor loader, as well as a storage bin. The timer sensor and a few buffer and filter gates that I'm going to add right now are just there to shut on and off different parts of this setup in the right order for the seed duplication to work properly. Starting with the buffer gates like this and then add the filter gates like that. The priorities for this setup are really crucial. The farmhouse conveyor loader needs to be set to 1, the storage bin to 2 and the dispenser to 3. For right now I will be setting this back to 5 so the dupes will build this and we change it later. Nothing special for the power is needed, once everything is hooked up and built we can focus on the farming area itself. When I say farming area I mean the area that we place down the plants that will get dropped by unpleasant environmental parameters, picked up and then the seed will be cloned. The full seed will be sent back with a conveyor loader and the newly split seed pieces will be sent back to the farming area to be planted again. The farming area needs to be accessible by the order sweepers right here and will be different on the left and right side depending on what you want. You could also make this uniform. But I want the access to the farming tiles on the left and flower pots on the right, which allows us to clone different plant types, agricultural and decor. I did make a few more changes to the right side in the future, so let's ignore that side for now. The lower part with the weight plate and automation is somewhat optional but saves you a lot of seed parts. It will tell the system on top to start and stop. When we do have a seed on the weight plate for longer than a few seconds, the system knows that all the farming areas have been planted and will tell the cloning section in the top left to stop. The stacked liquids will be the reason that the plant will drop as a seed. They just don't like growing in that. Which is why you see me optimize the right side, because we need three different layers of liquids. Cause that way we can make sure that the two tile high plants that we can place in the flower pots are also submerged. I think with this the preparations are done. A few more changes might be needed, but right now we will need salt. Since there is no salt on this planet, we ask Steku for help. Steku sends it over, we collect it with a payload opener, send it to the base, crush it to table salt, which will turn 100 kg of salt into 5 g of table salt. And those 5 grams are what we want inside of the storage bin. Once delivered, be sure your dupes don't steal it again. Close the doors and send off the dupes. And with this, let me explain the setup. Starting with a single seed here to the right on the pressure plate or by dropping it into the range of the lower of the two auto sweepers. For right now, we will plant the Joya seed. The auto sweeper will pick it up, plant it, and then we will wait for it to drop because of the unpleasant environment. While that happens we can go through the automation. The timer sensor is set to 2 seconds of green and 17 seconds of red. We just found out that this timing works pretty well. If the pressure plate sends a green signal and the timer sensor sends a green signal, it will be sent to the buffer gate, the filter gate, the buffer gate, the next filter gate and the next buffer gate who are all set to 5 seconds, which is the standard setting when you build it. The dispenser needs to be set to 1 kg and you need to activate the seat that you want to duplicate while being at least one priority higher than the storage bin, which is also set to 1 kg and has the salt in it. Oh, the auto sweeper just picked up the seat, the seat is being transported to conveyor loader, sent off the conveyor rail and as you can see the seat is 1 kg in size at the moment. It will be dropped at a conveyor chute, picked up by the auto sweeper, transported to the automatic dispenser will be dispensed, picked up by another auto sweeper. Here in this first round it will be the right one. Transported into the storage bin that has the salt and is set to 1 kg with one priority lower than the automatic dispenser. And there we have it. You can see this is not a full seed. Not a kilogram but 995 grams. The rest of the seed is here. A seed with the size of 5 gram. Exactly the amount that the salt is blocking inside of the storage bin. Leaving the bigger part of the seed behind. This smaller part is now being picked up by the right auto sweeper 
are transported to the conveyor loader, which is set to one priority lower than the storage bin. Remember to activate seats in that one as well, and then send down the conveyor rail until it reaches the pressure plate again. The filter in between is just optional stuff that I use for different seat selection. While this seat is being transported down, the rest of the one kilogram seat is being looped around. At the moment this has no effect, but as soon as you have two seats, the system up here will keep on dividing them into smaller reusable parts. Once the seat hits the pressure plate, the system will send a red signal to the end gate deactivating it. But since we do want to plant more, let us just set the flower pots here to jumping joyous, which means the seat will be picked up and the system activated again. Once the second seat drops, the system will be fully functional. Let me manually put in all the commands for the jumping joya planting and then we wait. After a short while, the jumping joya seat that we planted with 5 gram of a seat drops a full 1 kilogram seat, which is transported up here, as you can see, 1 kilogram, as indicated by seat times 1 grabbed by the orders we were in delivered to the dispenser, but not as a full seat. Only the size that is still remaining in either the automatic dispenser or the storage bin is being delivered. Hence a lot of smaller seats are created. 5 gram seats or 10 gram seats, as you can see by the remaining 990 gram in this automatic dispenser, or this 10 gram seat in the storage bin, which once it is filled up will be a 995 gram seat, leaving the 5 gram seat behind. That one is then being picked up by the right order sweeper again, transported to the conveyor loader being sent down to our planting slash farming area, dropped on the pressure plate, picked up by the water sweeper and planted again. And now the setup speeds up because it has all the resources it needs. With this we can speed this up and check for a while. When every planting order has been fulfilled, the system will automatically stop. This is achieved by the previously mentioned pressure plate set to above 0 kg, hooked up to a NOT gate, sending a red signal along this line to the end gate deactivating the whole system on top. Of course the farm tiles to the left work as well, here as shown with the weeds wards, but you don't have the two auto sewers on top, you have one below and one above. Same principle though, one auto sewer can reach the farm tiles and plant the seeds, and the other auto sewer can reach the conveyor loader and deliver the seeds. Huh, that finally out of the way, we now have access to almost unlimited seeds, which means we can now spend our time on something else. For example, why don't we build a system that will automatically pick up the care packages of the printing pot and deliver it either to the respective stables or drop it in the base to the rest of the material. Let's check this out by grabbing a bit of barbecue, sending it and following it through the conveyor loaders across the different critter egg filter to the final conveyor chute that just drops it down the traveling shaft. As for all the seats that we now have, I started here at the planting area and continued inside of the living module. Weirdly enough though, you can't see the planting order. Grabbed some grub food preserve, gave feral kitten the ability to research our cool slush geyser, slowly but steadily freezing our lovely dupe. Then I thought to myself, let's finally use this water geyser right here. Up until now I just closed this off and haven't had a correct infinite Asia fall storage inside, which is why we will need two different gases, in our case hydrogen and oxygen for us to create that infinite storage. Just like what you see right now. This setup with the two pockets, one hydrogen and one oxygen, is now able to store infinitely much liquid down where the pumps are. But at the moment we only have insulation around, which will break. The overpressure will kill those tiles, which is why I dropped the water down in the base and replaced the tiles with doors. The dupes did not like that. They either throw themselves from the ladder or got incapacitated. And I also had to refill the hydrogen and oxygen, which was annoying. But at least we managed to save all the dupes. Sorry now school the dupe number 4 and number 3. And to use squid cake as well. The brave hero that has been carrying all those dupes is the stable gun, now taking their own deserved rest. Good thing that we have feral kitten, our loving but incompetent doctor. Meanwhile Seiku got a whole delivery of 8 Paku again. And funny enough, 4 cycles later, yes I forgot a cycle, another 8 Paku. More sushi than I could ever wish for. Back on full distar, I insulated the water geyser storage and while looking at it, found out that the temperatures are quite hot, leaving me with the idea of cooling at least the plants so they keep growing. That is why I, a long time ago, integrated access to cooling in my living brick, giving us the option for different temperature ranges for cooling. Let's hook this up to the 30 degree cooling range, hook it up to the water and slowly fill it. Once filled, we take a look at the temperature one more time and check back in a few hundred cycles. The goal temperature, by the way, is controlled by this door setup right here. For the liquids going through it, it is around 20 to 30 degrees. 
Then I want to prepare a bit of nuclear waste, because at this point in time I wasn't sure how I wanted to create the massive amounts of radiation that I will need. That is why I started with a few farm tiles, which I thought of planting some wee swords in it, and placed the generators in the general area above it. Then we need a red bolt reflector to aim the red bolts where we want to have it, which in our case will be just a single mesh tile. And of course we need to stop our build because we have some trap tubes inside here. The stapler gun got their head stuck inside of the farm tile. However they did that, I don't know. If someone could be so kind and just get him out of there, then we could keep on going with the build. Just like this for example. We placed in the Wii swords and closed the thing, gave it an atmosphere, fertilized the Wii swords and are now shooting some red balls onto the mesh tile, creating nuclear fallout in the process. Of course this method would be super expensive, only creating the tiniest amounts of nuclear fallout in the process, but it will give us a blob of liquid that we can start with. Basically anything you do with nuclear waste will duplicate it, which in this first step will be hooking up the tiniest pump that we can find, suck it up and drop it on itself. Every time the liquid is now picked up you will create 13.5 grams of nuclear waste if I recall correct. This is true for almost every method that picks up the nuclear waste, which is why you see me try a bunch of liquid valves hooked up to a bunch of liquid vents. Easy setup but seem to work. Of course this last one here needs to be a pump not a valve, but the liquid valves themselves have been set to 15 grams per second. It was at this point in time that I noticed my mistake and replaced the last valve with another one of the small plastic pumps. If we take a look at the bottom left tile we can see that we create around 100 grams per second, which is not the best but not the worst. I'd say this is fine for the start. Checking out our energy production system everything looked fine. Even the temperatures are almost nice. I did think about replacing the water with the nuclear waste. But as for now, as it is, it works. Our food area here that we tried to cool is actually a little bit colder than before. Here you can see me send some plastic and the one and only spore kit to the main planetoid from which I probably want to shoot it to Flodista. Then we need another preparation for the Red Bull Regen. Any gas that is easily liquefiable will do. In our case I think going with steam would be the easiest method here. We can just use our almost infinite supply in water, dump it into our door heat duplication system, create some steam which we suck up and control the heat with a steam turbine. Just don't forget the automation. You did think about automation, didn't you? Nope, didn't do it. Well you see at the moment this system is flawed because we are just siphoning off the water from our cooling loop and refilling the cooling loop from our storage, which means I manually had to cut the connection. I did change that by adding a liquid shutoff which is still manually controlled and still siphoning off the water from the cooling loop. What a bad idea! I had to painstakingly add that later. But because this is really important and I skipped a lot, I will show you now. I rerouted the pipe that drops the water inside of the heating chamber underneath the steam turbine. It is now connected to liquid shutoff, which is controlled by the gas pressure inside of the steam chamber. The gas pump is being controlled by a gas storage and the temperature for the steam chamber is being controlled by this temperature sensor that activates or deactivates the door underneath. And now back in time to where nothing of that has happened yet. But I did build some gas pipes in and insulated tiles here, which was my preferred method of transporting the hot steam upwards. And of course, I mean, what else could have happened? Nazgul the dupe number 3 challenges me to get another Nazgul. But that would be a waste of a perfectly fine dupe, so let's just save him. Just don't do it again Nazgul. At least we are done with the piping, as you can see here. By the way, the temperature for the steam is around 190 and now 200 degrees Celsius. I thought if we are creating steam, why not use the energy as well? In the background I did produce a little bit of refined carbon and ceramic. Here on Zapiol we still have untapped power. Our self-powered oxygen module is permanently running, fed by our nearly infinite amount of water, which means if we connect it to our main grid, we can draw all of the excess production. So this has a nice and green living area, the only issue is that it's getting colder and colder, which is why I want a better temperature control for the lovely dupes. We should be able to easily achieve that by placing down a liquid tapadizer, running a few radiant pipes through it, prepare to fill it with water, don't forget the background tiles, change the piping in a way that it actually runs through the liquid tapadizer area, cut the old unnecessary connections, sufficiently fill it with water, hook it up to the power grid and then finally control it with an automation cable and a temperature sensor input. Once this is built we can set it to around mm, let's say 22 degrees celsius. I did not use enough water so I had to add more. That being done the thing now works. 
overall I should take care of more temperature issues, which is why I hook up our hospital and kitchen area to the 30 something degrees cooling loop that already cools our crops. If I somehow manage to squeeze it in, holy mess, the spaghetti piping is real in this one. But once nicely tetrised and reconnected to the original cooling loop, we will be able to at least cool the hospital and the kitchen. Speaking of those, a little bit more decor won't hurt. My usual solution for that is just slap down a whole bunch of pixel packs. By now you know how they work, don't make me explain it. And with this our injured dupes at least have something nice to look at. In sharp contrast to that, we have our crying our lady, trying to get through the day on mealwood and tears. Not everyone is a happy squid cake. And what else does a new cook need? How about the new spice grinder? Yes, we arrived in the new update as well. Sadly though, we don't have any seeds that we actually need for the spice grinder to work. Which is why I at least used the cloned seeds for decor. And now you can enjoy my midnight voice for a second. The stapler gun wanted a very fast duplicant. Let's see what we can do about that. By the way, stapler gun, are you a sparkle striker or not? No, super productive. This out of the way, we are talking about Stapler Gun because Stapler Gun had the wish to get the fastest dupe possible. A constructor and digger dupe with high athletic. The exosuit training will be a good start for that. Right now Stapler Gun's total is 20 athletics. In order to better differentiate them from other dupes, I did color their bedroom orange. Now we can give them a little bit more stress relief to train them better. A carpet underneath the tile of interest where the dupe actually sleeps will help with the stress relief. I think it was around minus 20 per cycle. But they don't spend the whole time there. The stapler gun will get their own little recreation room. As indicated by the blue color. Because of this moral boost we can spend more skill points on speed. And because of the stress relief we can put him on the hamster wheel once in a while. We just gotta restrict the access for every other dupe. I do love seeing all those joya seeds. You know where they come from? Yeah right here. Also, do you know what else makes dupes faster? Coffee, of course. Coffee will give a dupe plus one athletics, besides the plus four morale they get. You can even increase the running speed of a dupe if you build metal tiles, which increases the running speed of the dupe by 50%. I did make sure though that we don't lose the recreation room. Still nice and blue here. The only thing we are missing are the right nuts. Just where can we find some to put in this prepared hydrophonic farm tiles? Zepiol is the right place for that. But then why do you see me build a glass forge instead? This is one of those hell tries to repair the light bulb situations. We do need a interplanetary launcher to send over the pincher pepper seeds to plant the pincher pepper plant. But we do not have enough energy to power the thing. Hence we need glass first to build solar panels, which we can then use to power the interplanetary launcher and especially the red bull generators. And one new amazing dupe that can help us with that is the lovely member Azurea Sky. Freshly baked into the base, we will find a nice place for them before they end up sleeping on the floor. As for the skill point, let's give them what they enjoy. And let's not forget the tiny head. Since every dupe here has some kind of special sleeping quarter, Azurea Sky will be sleeping underneath the solar panels. Speaking of those, a few more solar panels got access to the sky, finally starting to probably work. Then I grabbed us a couple of shrooms, and it was time for ECX to finally get their own bedroom. This time I will be placing it near the mess hall. After putting in the bed and a bit of decor, it still looks like a pretty shitty place. Pretty fitting, considering it is right underneath our outhouses, but not fitting for our lovely ECX. So at least clean this mess up, guys. We did manage to uncover the solar panels too. And that means we can power up the interplanetary launcher, sending the pinch of pepper seed to Flodista. We just need to add the conveyor loader and conveyor rail, deliver the seed and wait for the right amount of red bolts. With this our well endowed package containing the right amount of nuts is on the way to our most back end planet. But as you see the auto sweepers are not grabbing the thing. That's a perfect example of the dupe got the task first, preventing the auto sweeper from doing anything. Which is why you saw an school dupe number 4 deliver the thing. Putting that aside it should now be delivered to the base. Nice. Speeding this up we finally get the seeds, come on, yes there we have it. Now we can grab them and plant them. Just like this. Those plants will need polluted water to grow. Which is why I grabbed the infinite torch with a freaking petroleum tile that has been annoying me forever. Pump it out, deliver it to the plants and cut the pipe right in front of it. Deconstruct the pipe pieces that hold the annoying petroleum, reconstruct it and deliver the polluted water, hopefully creating some pinch of pepper nuts in the future. But I guess we probably have a temperature issue with our polluted water. Which is why I changed the design and automated the temperature control. Cause the water that we feed in comes from the cool slush geyser. Or was this the toilet water from the dupes? Not so sure. Toilet water coffee, best coffee. 
not even Kobi Luba can compare. Then I wanted to find out how much water this water geyser here produces per second, for which I had to analyze it, but this time without the dupes getting hurt all the time, leaving me no other choice than to be nice to my dupes once in a while and give them some atmo suits to work in. The geyser being analyzed, we first grab the data bank and then check out how much water we get per second. I do have a mod that tells me the total average flow. I probably put a name in the description somewhere because I didn't want to manually calculate it. We do get a total average flow of 2929 and 1643 for the cool slush geyser, which means we could power 36 electrolyzers at all time, which is pretty nice. There's also a lot more stuff that happened in the background, like the dukes building this new vacuum chamber entrance to the duplication area that I might want to expand in the future, which is why I tiled everything in, deconstructed it, created a nice vacuum and started a few ladder areas underneath, created even more vacuum and you constructed everything that we don't need anymore. Then I reinstated the insulation and a few more ladders, put in a few more floors and that's pretty much it. And look at that, we got one of the weird flux lugs, which is trying to sabotage my freaking vacuum seal. Man, this game has no chill at all. Let's just grab it and throw it somewhere in the carbon dioxide basement. The last thing that I want to do in this episode is build a permanent one tile food storage. Not for the dupes themselves, but to preserve the mealwood that would otherwise rot away all over the planet. I do think that I have a use for that later on. Maybe on another planetoid. Every bit of food counts. We only have around 20 to 100 million calories, which is not enough for what I might have planned. For this one tile food storage, we will need a bit of hydrogen. Luckily, we do have enough of that. After sending it over to the thermal regulator for cooling, we can just cut the pipe. Then the cooling loop is filled with hydrogen. We can deconnect the input hydrogen pipe and set a desired temperature, which in our case is minus 80 degrees Celsius for a change. Don't worry about the water that I filled into the one tile food storage. It will just freeze. As for the thermal regulator, that is just cooled by the dropping water from the cool slush geyser. I don't think external cooling is needed. We do need a conveyor loader though, which enables the dupes to manually drop the food there. As you can see by the time this was built, the water already froze. Now we can deconstruct the corner and then de and reconstruct this exact pipe piece which will freeze some hydrogen gas into the food storage. If we do that at least two times, we have a pressure of around two kilograms per tile. Just to be sure, I did it three times. This will prevent any rotten food from off-gassing. Off-gassing only works to 1.8 kilograms per tile, but we do have a higher hydrogen pressure here. Then I went overboard and even took out the ice. Normally I wouldn't care, but I thought this might be the right thing to do. Then I gave a large scale collection order. The food storage is set to sweep only, which I do have the feeling will keep the dupes busy for a while and help us accumulate a bit of food, hopefully a few million calories. And with that I would really appreciate a like and to see you on the next video. Since you're already here, I'm guessing the video on the screen could be to your liking. Love you guys and Luma out.